Hey, how's it going? It has been just a few minutes since I put out the last video, so, but, you know, I haven't been sitting on the couch watching TV and eating bonbons, that's for sure. I've been working really hard at trying to get the space all completed and done. I have to say that, you know, I haven't put out videos in a while. It's been killing me, but the progress that I've made has definitely been worth it. So, a big update coming this time, so sit back, grab a beer, and enjoy. How's it going? My name is Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about electric brewing, see basement finishing videos just like this one and all sorts of other home brewing related stuff, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. Now, it's hard to know where to start at really, but I think what I want to do is I want to start at the entrance to the basement so that we can kind of go through everything that I've done and everything that's been updated. So I'm going to do that now and uh, we'll see you at the entrance. All right, so starting from the top here, um, I've got the brick completely put in and the weird thing about it is the walls were not perfect and all that stuff. So you can kind of see where I did a continuation of the brick uh, on there. It might look a little bit funny on camera, but it does look pretty good in person. Got it all the way up, got uh, all the trim put up there. Um, those of you that follow us on social media have seen some updates, but you're going to see some new stuff in this video that you haven't seen online yet. So if you're not following us over there, be sure to do so. Um, this used to be a white painted block and I actually took a little art artistic liberty and, uh, painted them and took the brick and continued it on just like it would be as if, uh, it was all the brick paneling. So that is the entrance. Got the ceiling painted black up there and uh, got all that done. Got a little bit of paint on the floor. I'm going to be repainting the floors anyway, so not a huge ordeal. Got all that done. Um, got all the trim on since the last time you guys saw around the doors as well. Everything still has to be uh, covered with polyurethane, but other than that, everything else is pretty much done with that regard. Uh, sign is up. You guys have seen that before. Uh, one thing I did add, and I spoke about this before, was this drink rail and basically it's going to work to hold your glass if you're milling around or if you're brewing or whatever not a lot has gone on over here as far as any kind of updates or anything like that i know that some of you are wanting a video on the the hood it's coming i do have a couple of water mitigation issues that i got to do with uh, regards to how it uh how the condensation reacts it was a little bit different in my last build. I had the motor outside over here and it would drip down into the sink and I don't have that now. Oh, and by the way, I got that big gaping hole covered up too. So uh, future plans is I'm gonna actually install a hose in here and then I wanna do, I'm gonna put a drip rail inside of here because that's where 90% of the condensation comes from. Didn't really have anything with the ceiling getting too condensed or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the updates that we've done on this room here. All right, let's take a look in here, what we got going on. So as you can see, it has it is still chocked full of all kinds of stuff. Um, I did move this shelving unit. That shelving unit used to be over here, and I moved it over to there. If you can kind of see down in there, the uh, sump pump is down there underneath. I just raised the bottom shelf up. Uh, and then over here on the other side, I decided to build in some cabinets and these cabinets are all custom made by me. The doors are custom made. Everything is custom made to fit the space. Um, got some camera gear and stuff in there. Gives me a nice little workbench to be able to do all my, you know, calculations or get my uh, ingredients all ready to go. And then this area back over here underneath the stairs works really well for me to actually be able to stand up and do video editing. So this, this video here will be edited in that space after I get done filming it here, but kind of good to stand up whenever you're working every once in a while. I'm eventually going to be getting a tall office chair, but that was kind of, that kind of evolved out of needing to do something with the space underneath the stairs. And I thought that was probably the best thing to do. So, but I was able to shoehorn everything in there. You can kind of see the B80 over there. The Brazil is there. A couple other brewing systems, a couple of fermenters, uh, another brewing system there, a couple other kettles up there. So it's it's pretty chock full. 
I like the pegboard. I was able to get, get a small piece of that and hang it up over there. So that kind of gives me a little bit of flexibility on being able to change out things. I think ultimately I do want to put up another cabinet over here just so that I can get some more of this stuff inside of a cabinet and whatnot. So we are going to head out to the L-shaped bar that you've all been waiting for. <laughs> all right, let's check it out. All right, so here we go. And I've posted some pictures of this on social media, but uh, haven't really done a video on it yet. The last time you guys saw anything on this, it was just an open space there. Just kind of a quick overview. I didn't do a lot of filming because I was kind of in construction mode. Um, the bar is made from a two by four framing. And then the outer skin is all three quarter inch oak plywood. The trim is three quarter inch plywood. I did some half inch plywood there. Just, or, sorry, not three quarter inch. This is three quarter inch, just oak solid board. I did some half inch uh, oak board there, just to kind of give it a little bit of a detail element. And then if you can see underneath of here, I'm using the black pipe for supporting the bar top itself. And it just kind of gives us, kind of brings the whole theme together. Um, wrap the column that was in the center of the room there with some, with a, a pole wrap, they call it. Uh, it's like an oak that's glued to a backing that you can flip it around and whatnot. So um, the other thing over here, is I put another drink rail in over here. I didn't take it all the way to the wall because we're gonna have some, we're gonna have a game machine over here and it kind of would conflict with that. So also got a, another TV up over here uh, along with that TV over there. You guys have seen that one in a couple of videos. So this uh, bar rail is really fun to work with. Um, I think I got some really good seams though here in this corner area. Uh, some of the other seams, not so much. It's really, it's a matter of sanding and fitting and sanding and fitting and sand some more and fit some more. <laughs> the top of the bar is actually, uh, they recommend doing half inch plywood on there and then putting like three quarter inch plywood over top of that. I went three quarter both ways. I mean, this thing is, it's pretty rock solid and nobody's moving it. I mean, it's, it's not going to move at all. So coming around. Oh, the other thing I had too that I put in is, uh, some dual purpose uh, USB outlets as well as plugs there. Somebody's over and their phone's dying, they wanna charge it up. They can do that with those uh, outlets right there. The other thing that I did, a lot of bars that I've been in or seen have a pretty cool element to them and that is uh, lighting underneath. Let me turn these lights down real quick. Here, and you can see maybe. I'm not real big on the flashy, flashy thing, but. So if you can see, I've got LED lighting underneath of the bar there. And maybe you can see a little bit over here, but uh, just kind of give you an idea. It's, it's underneath of the bar up there. And I've got, I use some foil tape that you would use for duct work as a reflector. And it works pretty well. I think like when you put it into like an orange color kind of matches the lighting for the rest of the bar, but you can see that it lights underneath the bar. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to add a couple of, uh, purse hooks underneath of there. So whenever uh, the, the uh, couples come over, the ladies will have a place to put their purses at and whatnot. So that is that. Then uh, got all the lighting installed. Um, if you notice these fixtures actually had the bulbs themselves in the fixture and it was really, really too bright for the eye. And one of the things about the fixtures that I think is pretty cool is that these are actually pencil holders. Drilled an inch and five eighths hole inside. And then this, the shade for it is actually a styrofoam cup, which is pretty crazy. I, I was able to fit those together and basically made those lampshades for about a dollar 25 each, not including the tools, of course. So, and then one light that I did add to the plan that I didn't have in the plan is the light over the sink. So that is vital. There was no light over here before, so thankfully with the open ceiling, I could just add a light and not have to worry too much about it. And then of course, those of you that seen the updates on social media know that whenever I poured these concrete countertops, I put in a glass rinser, which is really, really cool. I really enjoy it. Um, the concrete countertops were all made by me. I do have a, 
video coming out on those, on how I did those. I actually had some issues with it, but I think it maybe it left some really cool features to them. And then I've got tons of storage underneath the cabinets here. That cabinet there is actually built to house like a toaster oven. So if you want to make some snacks while I'm down here and stuff. Uh, this cabinet is also custom made by me, completely custom one-off exactly for the space. Um, I do need to put a backsplash on there. There's a wooden backsplash that's going to be coming in. So uh, <clears throat> I got to make it. Made all the drawers and, you know, installed the slides, all that stuff myself. All the trim, everything is uh, done. I did find some pretty cool fixtures for the handles. Uh, those are pipe caps. And then that is uh, like elbows and pipe. So it fits the overall decor. Um, that's also going to go along with out here. I will have a footrest that runs along both sides of the bar and that's going to be out of iron pipe as well. And then we have the piece de resistance, the twins. These are two Kegland series four keg graders. Probably seen this one up in the kitchen on some prior videos, which kind of brings me to another point of why I haven't made videos in so long. There is just, there has been so much space taken up by everything that belongs down in the bar here. Um, quick detail, somebody asked me about this uh, earlier in a video. There is, if you can see down in there, there's a tube that runs up into the tower on this. And you can see that there's some condensation up there. I need to put a little bit of insulation in there, but these things are wicked awesome. One other thing I wanted to show you is that uh, the keg raiders normally have a bracket on the back side here for the tank to mount on and everything. I actually ran uh, airline tubing all the way around the bar, all the way through that wall right there into the back. And then this area right here is probably about 12 inches wide in there. And I ultimately, at some point, I want to get about a 30 or 40 pound tank, whatever, 20, 30 pound tank, and actually have this split off to run both keg raiders and then uh, use the inside regulators inside of each one of the keg raters to control the pressures and whatnot. And I have a video coming on the, the GovReg regulators on there. If you wonder about the space in between, I was told by Key from Kegland to have about four inches of space in between them and then some space on either side. So maybe a little bit under that, but I think we'll probably be okay with uh, how everything is down here since it's in the basement, it's a little cooler. So. That is a little bit of a detail on how I got the keg raiders to be all the way up underneath of there. They have a huge amount of space inside for kegs. And this one's not actually hooked up yet. I got to do the, the uh, plumbing and all that stuff inside of there. But it is coming around. So got a bottle opener here. Got the fridge installed. Got some hops and stuff in there ready. Oh, candy. <laughs> and then... What an atrocity, it's empty except for yeast, so I'll be brewing and using some of that yeast here in the near future. But uh, got the bulkhead covering all the piping up there. As I said before, got all the trim and everything around all the doors all done. Um, there is not too much left. There's just a little bit left. I need to, I gotta figure out what I'm doing for my control situation for the basement brewer here. I have an old control panel, but I've got some new stuff from Blickman that I'm going to try out and see if I can use it. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, so I haven't got that mounted. Actually, I actually think I want to do, they make a fold down shelf unit or shelf bracket that you can put on a wall. And I think I might want to do that there. I really want to get back to doing some videos. I've got a lot of stuff from different manufacturers that I need to get to as far as reviews and everything goes. You guys probably saw some things in the, uh, in the storage area that I didn't talk about. So maybe you can leave a comment down below on what you saw in there that uh, you're excited for a review on. So I will see you guys on the next video. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. Have a great one. We'll see you.